Okay, um, Math 12A, this should actually be quick uh, because we are just reviewing today and that's it. Um, because you're gonna have a test on Tuesday, so we're go I'm gonna make a quick review of all the things you need to know for 8.1 to 8.4. Um, and then I'm gonna give you Monday the study so that if you had questions or anything, you could let me know. And then the test will be Tuesday. Mm. Sorry, I just finished running outside with a dog. We were doing agility. I'm a little parched. All right. Um, I did have someone contact me and say they weren't quite sure what to do with the homework on the circle, like in number one, where it only gives you the number five. But you really have to read the instructions above it, which says, write the equation for a circle with a center at the origin. At the origin means at the point zero and zero. So the center is the H and K, and they said, and the given radius. So five is the radius. So if a, the equation for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, h and k are both zero. So x minus zero squared, just x squared, y minus zero squared, would be y squared and r squared. Well, if the radius is five, five squared would be 25. That's really all they're asking. Don't overcomplicate that one too much, which seems to be um, usually the problem with the questions like that is people tend to overcomplicate it and think it has to be harder than it is. All right, so let's real quickly look at um, the types of questions that I could ask you on a test. What did we do in this section, in this chapter, or this portion of the chapter, because I'm in the whole thing. So in section 8.1, that's where we said, like, um, if the vertices of a triangle are this, this, and this, tell me, is it an isosceles triangle? Is it a whatever triangle? And we dealt with the length of a line formula which was the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And then don't forget to take the square root of it. It also talked about prove that this is parallel to this or prove that it's a right angle triangle, which would mean you would have two lines that are perpendicular to one another. So you would be looking for slope and slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we said if two lines are parallel, then their slopes would actually be the same. If the two lines are perpendicular, then the slopes would be negative reciprocals of one another, meaning different signs and flipped over. Um, and then we also talked about um, finding the midpoints of things. and. The thing I want to emphasize with a midpoint is with your answer, your answer should be a point, meaning you should have an x value and a y value. If I say, what is the midpoint, don't tell me 7. That doesn't make any sense. It's got to be a point. Um, and so the midpoint to find the x is just x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And then y1 plus y2 divided by 2 to find the y value. So again, for a midpoint, there, it, there needs to be an x and a y value there. Those are the three major things that came out of section 8.1. Um, remember, if I ask you what kind of triangle is it, um, a scalene triangle means the three side lengths are all different. Isosceles means two of the side lengths are the same and one is different, and an equilateral means all three would be equal. Um, section 8.2, we talked about division of a line segment. So if I said I want you to divide this line up into, uh, let's say, three equal parts, um, you would have to, I, I would probably give you the beginning point 
and the end point. So I don't know, let's say this is negative three and two, and this is, I don't know, seven and uh, seven and 10, I don't know. All right, and you had to find um, the two points in between that would divide it up into three equal pieces. So you need to know what do I add, what do I subtract to my x's, and what do I add, what do I subtract to my y's. Now I made this up so it's not going to work out nicely, but what you would need to do is figure out if I do 7 take away negative 3, that is 10, and if I'm dividing it up into three equal pieces, I would do 10 divided by 3, which would be 3.3. So I would be adding 3.3 to my x's every time. That's for my x's. For my y's, I would do the same thing. I would do like 10 take away 2, whoops, 10 take away 2, which would be 8. And I want to divide it up into three equal pieces. So that would be like 2.67. I think, yeah, that'd be like 2.67. So that's what I would be adding to my y's each time. And I would be able to find the missing points, right? That section really wasn't too hard. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, again, if you forget, go back. You can, the good thing about this online thing is if there was a section you were struggling with, you can go back and rewatch the video. You can actually hear my lecture again which you don't have when I'm live. So um, there are a couple of advantages to doing this. That you can do it in your pajamas if you want. Um, except me, I can't, because I have to be in front of the iPad. So that's 8.1 and 8.2. 8.3 talked about the distance between a point and a line. So I would give you the location of the point. So based on where I just stuck it, let's say negative two, <coughs> excuse me, negative two and four. And the equation of this line might be y is equal to x minus two based on where I have it. And we would be looking for the shortest distance. And so remember that the steps where we have to find an equation for this line. So we would do y minus y1, so y minus four times slope, and the slope would be the negative reciprocal of this one, so negative one times x plus two. I'd find an equation for this line. I'd make it equal to this one. I'd find an x and a y value for this point, and then I would do my length of the line formula. This is also where um, instead of giving you a point, I might give you two lines and I might ask you for the vertical distance between them, the horizontal distance between them, and then the shortest distance between them. I will likely ask a question like that. If not on the test, then definitely on the big assignment that I'm going to end up giving you before the end of the year. Um, but for sure, you will see questions like that. I guarantee it. And I very likely will put one on the test. So those were like the 39 and 42. Again, if you're struggling with that, I did number 42 in a video. Um, plus I did an example in a video. So there's two different record, me doing two different questions that are the same kind like those. Um, and then we did section 8.4 which you're just finishing up. I will be checking that homework um, Friday morning. And that was the equation of the circle, which is x minus h squared plus y plus k squared is equal to r squared. Um, I can tell you one like example three in your text, I will almost certainly put one like that on there. So just be prepared for that. Um, that's pretty much it. So um, yeah, so this is the review for Friday, Monday. Um, I won't post a lesson. I'll just post a little reminder that it's a study day. 
feel free to contact me to, on Friday or on Monday um, with questions if you have any uh, because your test is Tuesday at what would it be? It would be at 10 to 10, right? That's our class time. It would be at 10 to 10 and would go until, why is my brain not working? Would go really until about 11. Um, again, I don't have any time, any problem giving you extra time if you need it, but also I want to make sure that you do have lots of time to finish it if you have to head off to like a Zoom meeting for another class or something. Um, but it should give you ample opportunity to finish it. I don't make these tests any longer than I would a test if you were sitting in my classroom. I don't make it any longer just because you're sitting at home. In fact, I'm more likely to make it shorter. So, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, so make sure that if you're struggling that you ask questions. Um, if I find that a lot of you have questions, we could even arrange to do a quick Zoom meeting on Monday if, if we felt like that was going to be of benefit. Um, I'm, you know, I want you guys to kind of let me know what you need and I will, I'll make that happen, alright? So, uh, this is Friday for you, so have a good weekend. <laughs>